last week or so was start putting together a regular newsletter for former clients just about, you know, here's some cool stuff happening in the world of 3D printing. Sure, that, or I mean, like, if you have follow-up workshops for them, if they really liked your first workshop, and hey, like, you learned all this stuff, and like, now we're doing something, now that's like just, you know, those people are already engaged with you. Imagine you've done two, two workshops, like, progressive, and then like, they went to both of them, chances are they'd probably be interested in the third one, right? Hmm, that's a great idea. Um, or they would just email on to someone that they and think they're and if, if if somebody did come and they really enjoyed it, those would be the people that are probably gonna be talking about you anyway. Maybe you could offer them sort of sort of, sort of referral, like hey, if you invite like a friend, they come, like I'll give you a discount on our more advanced course or something along it's those a good lines. Idea. There's so it's many great different idea. things that you can do to uh, I would say that you should really go to that. <laughs> startup talk on Monday uh, if, you, if you're free because Scott has like 20 times a year. You said it's Monday at 5.45? I will yeah. probably be going to that. Well, great. Yeah, you know, like I said, sort of the whole promoting, you know, getting my name out there for the workshop something I'm totally new to, so I really appreciate all this advice. There, there may also be people just like in Seattle that talk about 3D printing. Mm -hmm. They have a blog about it, maybe. One of the one of the biggest names here, yeah. Course for free, you know. One of the okay, biggest, uh, about this. yeah. One of the biggest names in three D printing. The the guy whose username is just the three D printing nerd. He lives in Seattle, so I've been trying to connect with him, but he's like a massive, massive name. So it's kind of hard to connect with. Yeah, you don't don't aim for the top when you yeah. first start. Like, okay. Do, do the basic stuff like post uh, your events on Facebook groups that talk about three D printer. Post, post your uh, events on the discussion part of like meetups on other groups that talk about 3D printing or who you think your audience is, and just uh, start there. Um. <clears throat> okay. okay, cool. Since we started with workshops, can I make a question? Would people be interested to have like an introductory strategy consulting or systems design, business design workshop? Would anybody attend something like that? So what exactly, what kind of business design are you talking about? Like a marketing how, funnel? How, like? to, how to design your business, how basic principles of how to be successful, how to interact with your environment. I mean, when that, I hear this type of thing, it just sounds kind of like buzzwords, right? How to be successful. It's like, wake up I don't know what terminology, I came last like, week, I don't know what terminology you use here. Maybe then you can go to more details, you can go to AI, you can go to marketing, yeah. you can go to certain For things. For sure, but and I think if you said, hey, here's a presentation about like how you as like a non-technical founder can leverage AI, people would go. But not like, hey, how to be successful. You need to be way more specific than that. System design, I was thinking about something to start with a workshop like with system design and then go to more detail like marketing so or so AI. So I think design, you mean like how the, like the architecture you can use at Amazon that would be successful for a startup or so something? So I, I think her question was the insightful one in this conversation as well, right? Who, so, so she was asking him who, she, who he wants in the room. So who specifically, when he's talking about being specific, he is employing this uh, cl clarity on the sub-segment that you're engaging with. Mm -hmm. So who specifically are you oh, trying to thanks. get? What do they look like? What's the sub-sub-sub demographic of this person? I've been saying to friends that want to start a business and they need a certain set of They so need get to understand the environment. Two more giant steps closer. Right? It's not entrepreneurs, right? It's tech entrepreneurs. Tech it's not entrepreneurs. Tech, but it's not tech entrepreneurs. It's tech entrepreneurs. But get even closer. Are they still at work or are they not at work? Are they uh, planning to do a growth business or not do a growth business? Are they already have marketing experience or they don't have marketing experience? You know, get much, much closer to who that person is so that the message that you're trying to express is very specific. Yeah. Not, would you like some first aid, but would you like a little Band-Aid that fits on the thumb because, you know, it doesn't work on the thumb for any other kind of Band-Aid except this one? Now you've got a very specific message that you can make. And now then it becomes compelling. Oh, that's me. Yeah, you say, I need help with that. I, Not, I need help with everything. So if you did like 20 of those, right, then maybe I'd be like, yes, to all 20, I'm interested. Okay, thank you for the insight.
can I ask you a question? So where um, have you, are you launching a business now, or is it an idea, or how I'm far are you here, into I it? I came to see what's going on, like to start up a thing here in Seattle, because we get to the... That's what everybody here is doing. I came last week. <laughs> oh, it was just a question so I can understand I, how I'm you're finding of... your target audience and what kind of research you could do, either she, if it was... She's asking marketing questions, like she knows something about marketing. <laughs> just because <laughs> I run a brand um, and I published a book and it's so it's an integrative approach uh, and I sell sporting and outdoors products based off of my first book and I heal people with theta I also do motivational speaking and stuff like that so um, this I'm just wondering how you with more narrow so I think what she was asking is how far along the evolution are you at do you do you have a customer yet has someone paid you yet do you have a co-founder yet? Do you have a example of, well, yes, you probably do want a co-founder. Um, so if you don't have a co-founder, the chances are that you're limiting the ability of your company to survive. Um, on the other hand, you're adding to the risk because if you date the wrong person, you can kill your company with your co-founder. So it goes both ways. But um, if you want to do something that is stable, you need extra resources. Okay. Co-founders bring those resources. Do you have an example of one person who you have solved this problem for? No. Yeah. Somebody who wants to launch a business and who wants to understand that you know, I mean, the environment that If you going. picked any person here or any person at where you work or any person you met on the street and you solved their problem and they went, hello you. So you solved his problem already. I could help him to maybe uh, to design. No, no, that's not what I asked. You, that's a could. I'm asking have. No. Okay. So, so that's not what she wanted to know is, is where you're at in the cycle and you're not still in the... Completely in, in the beginning. Yeah. That's right. That's why I can here. That's right. So I, uh, I find when I talk, you know, when we do angel investing, we're trying to do, is this a real business and is it ready to grow? And we ask some questions about finance and usually get bad answers, which is why we're running the finance work workshops today. We also get relatively bad answers around the sales funnel and how people intend to go to their customers and how they intend to go to more customers. How many people know how to manage a sales funnel? Manage or have I mean, an idea? Uh, you know, get better. <laughs> <laughs> So, so a lot of times when people are beginning and they say, I have this great idea and won't you buy it, they sort of have skipped a bunch of steps in the middle. And so there's a certain amount of, I don't know what you're talking about to, I know what you're talking about, I, I know what you're talking about and I'm interested. I'm interested and I have a problem, I have the ability to pay and I'm coming back to learn more and now I'm paying, right? So walking people down that process Dave McClure called it R, metrics for pirates. Activation, acquisition, retention, mm -hmm. revenue, and referral. Those are the five steps. And different, different uh, marketing things have gone different ways with different words. But the fundamental notion is going from people who are totally unaware of you to people that love you so much that they won't shut up. And, and my goal as an angel investor is to try to find that you have 20 customers that love you so much they won't shut up. And if you got 20 of those, like, oh my God, this is probably a business that's going to go somewhere. Um, and so start with one. Try to get it so that you solve their problem. Try to get it so that you solve the problem. Well, I, I, I pay have you and something then... very specific with a co-founder, but that's not the strategy consulting. That's something else. That's validation software. Okay. That's a very specific target group with companies to sell, et cetera, et cetera. What to do, why do it better, et cetera. So that's something different. Okay. I we could talk would. about this a little bit later. Yeah, okay. Any other topics people want to put on the table? Does anybody know how to do B2B sales and is building a B2B business? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I know. Everyone can always get better. <laughs> but so I struggle with the notion of startups who have no money figuring out how to be a B2B company because it usually, you know, most B2B sales are 18, 24, 36 months kind of mm -hmm. sales cycle. So you starve to death by, before you get anywhere, right? From, from, from what I've seen, it's all been about relationships, especially for Previously starters. existing relationships. Yes. Um, 
especially like Simi, he's got like some, he, he, he came here like the last two times, yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's selling something to Expedia, and he said that everything that they can, all their like, connections to these big companies at HR people are usually like a warm intro of somebody that they know. Right. So I talked to somebody yesterday who's um, doing a business that's going to end up being a B2B business, and he's got a Rolodex of deep relationships with all these people. And like his vision of how to sell is to basically call all his friends. And I expect in three months he's going to be up at you know probably a million dollars worth of sales within three months just because he's got that kind of relationship. On, on the other hand, I think if you know who you're targeting in a business, that if you just target enough of people like, oh, This is kids. a guess, not an no, no, experience. No, no, no. no, this is what uh, Izzy's doing now, and uh -huh. he's been getting some good hits. So, okay. I mean, he's even trying to like build like a. Let's just realize when you're going down that route and it's not people you meet face to face. I mean, the conversion rate, uh, you get a one percent response rate. That's extremely, extremely good. Yes, extremely good. So, I mean, going down that route is uh, is lots of no's. Uh, it's very difficult in the enterprise market because uh, we get spam, or, like anyone in business gets spam all the time, and that's what it will be considered. So, I think um, if you're like sending out a good enough email that doesn't sound like spam, and like, <laughs> yeah, like everything sounds like I'm spam, I just, I'm just being honest, like in the enterprise stuff, like, I mean, yes, like you should do stuff like that, don't get me wrong, but that is a very hard endeavor. I to I've watched people be enterprise salesmen and within six weeks to nine weeks sort of walk through all the cracks in the organization and land at the right person and have the right coffee and give the right secretary a flower and then all of a sudden there's a sale. And, and it just so I know that people can do that, but that's sort of a ninja move that I have yes. no <laughs> understanding of. The, the pathway that I think is interesting for startups that I wanted to put on the table was a B to C to B pathway. And so if most corporations have a business credit card that the first level manager can spend a certain amount without approval, whether it's a hundred bucks or a thousand bucks, depends on the company. But if you can sell to the engineer or the first line person by getting that person's manager to just solve the problem here, take, take 15 bucks a month, just sign up, solve it. I don't, and then enough of those happen inside the company where this engineer is using that piece of software and this engineer is using it and enough of them are starting to, to all get seats using the software, then the accounting department comes in and says, wait a second, we have a hundred licenses for the same place. Why, why are we doing this? And so they do an enterprise deal with you. So you end up doing a B2B sale maybe a year or two down the road because the accounting department wants to optimize, not because a middle manager wants to make a decision. And so. That's the only way that I know effectively to get into big businesses as a startup because you have revenue all along the way. So how many of you have, well, two of you have cash flow positive now. How many of you have a cash flow projection that gets you to the cash flow positive in the next three months? Yeah. Yeah, so I would work on that. I, I like to have food to eat, so. <laughs> I think there's breakfast upstairs, they said. Yeah, there's breakfast <laughs> stuff upstairs on the fourth floor if people want to grab stuff. Um, are we, yeah, so we're at a good point to break and uh, talk to the people you don't know and have a conversation and go grab some stuff upstairs if you want something upstairs. Phil, you want to say anything before everybody runs off? I don't know, that's good. I'm Phil. <laughs> Sorry, I'm late. What do you do, Phil? Um, I have a background in admission management and solution for uh, Lego builders called uh, you So hmm. essentially it's the Shazam for Lego. You might be pointing your phone at any Lego part and the app's telling you what it is and all of a sudden it's a good So it helps builders, uh, whether they're rebuilding or pre-building, gives them instruction or inspiration. Are you working with Lego or is this on the side? Uh, it's a digital attacker, so it's intended to uh, yeah, disrupt them. Nice. <laughs> Could be used for Minecraft? I mean, there's Minecraft, Lego, so 
There actually, yeah, yeah. there actually is an online design program where you can design whatever you want, and then you just click a button and can import it into Minecraft, or click another button, it'll show you a step-by-step -step breakdown on how to build that Lego. Right All right. Next to mingle. Next to mingle.